Hello everyone, this is Al Red Sox Fan coming to you from Al Red Sox Fan YouTube channel. Hope all is well. And we have an absolutely marvelous mythical matchup between the 1919 Chicago White Sox, a.k.a. the Black Sox, and the 1975 Cincinnati Reds, the Big Red Machine, as the White Sox continue on their Road to Redemption tour. And we're going to be using Out of the Park... 19 uh, out of the bar out of the park 20 excuse me as our sim engine absolutely marvelous game with wonderful graphics so welcome to the 1990 1919 chicago black Sox road to redemption tour as they take on the big red machine of the 75 cincinnati reds will dead ball throw a wrench into the big red machine or will it be planted six feet under we shall see so grab your favorite beverage and snack, and enjoy this mythical matchup of the ages. Jack Dawson is here in Cincinnati, ready to enjoy the game. So without any further ado, let's go to the starting lineups. I will be managing the 1919 Chicago White Sox, the out-of-the-park baseball 20 sim engine, the Cincinnati Reds. I did make both lineups, though, and chose both starting pitchers. For the... White Sox leading off playing second base is Eddie Collins Sr. Chick Gandell bats second. He plays first. Shoeless Joe Jackson is in left. He's batting third. Buck Weaver is the cleanup hitter playing third base. Happy Felch is in center. He bats fifth. Nemo Leobold bats sixth in right field. Doing the catching batting seventh is Ray Schalk. Batting eighth, the shortstop, Swede Risberg. Towing the rubber for the dead ballers of 1919, Chicago White Sox, Eddie Seacott. The spitter is legal and the scuff ball in these Road to Redemption games. For the Cincinnati Reds, a fond admirer of the 1919 White Sox, Pete Rose Sr. He's leading off, playing third base. Joe Morgan batting second at second base. Johnny Bench does the catching. He's batting third. Tony Perez is a cleanup hitter, and he's at first base. George Foster speaks softly. Carry a big boomstick is in left and bats fifth. Batting sixth, sixth, Ken Griffey Sr., and he's in right field. Davey Concepcion, the smooth fielding shortstop, bats seventh. And Cesar Geronimo bats eighth in center field. Don Gullett is on the mound for the Cincinnati Reds. He was 15-4. and four. With a 2.42 earned run average in 1975. Eddie Seacott was 29-7 with one save and a 1.82 ERA for the Chicago White Sox of 1919. We're at Riverfront Stadium, so let's start the ball game. Also here is Bobby Cantalano, the great alligator hunter from down Florida ways. And Randy Luxenberg. As he says, Bobby, no rain two days in a row. Woohoo! <clears throat> to the ballpark we go. It is a packed house here in Cincinnati to witness this mythical matchup for the ages. We're going to use the modern 3D view because this is not a season replay. So when I do a season replay, I like the classic. And we're also going to use the view I've chosen is the low wide low camera view first time we'll be using that it's kind of cool I think this is something new they've added to all of the views so that's pretty cool all right so Don Gullett's on the mound Gullett 10 out of 10 stamina overall quality of pitches are average movement good 7 out of 10 and control is average Five out of ten. Now fluctuate between lefty and right-handed batters. His fastball maxes out between 90 and 92 miles per hour. Behind the plate, Johnny Bench, eight out of ten arm, ten out of ten defense. Pete Rose, three out of ten defensive range at third. Davy Concepcion and Joe Morgan, outstanding up the middle, both ten out of tens. And Tony Perez is an eight out of ten at first. George Foster, nine out of ten in left. 
for range. 8 out of 10 arms. Cesar Geronimo, unbelievable in center. 10 out of 10 range. 9 out of 10 arm. Ken Griffey Sr., 3 out of 10 range. And a 4 out of 10 arm. ID Gesture is here in Cincinnati to witness this game along with Captain Carl. Hope all is well. Check out ID Gesture's wonderful channel. Coming up, I believe, this Sunday... The Dungeons & Dragon group will be getting started on ID Jester's channel, and I believe that's going to start at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right, so Eddie Collins Sr. will lead off, followed by Chick Gandell and Shoeless Joe Jackson. Eddie Collins in 1919 batted <clears throat> 319, four home runs and 80 ribbies. Excellent contact hitter, not much power. Good eye. Gullet throws strikes. Here's the pitch, and ball game on its way. 2 1 count to Collins. Gullet deals, and he sends that ball down the left field line. Foster on the run, and he'll get there. So Collins tries to go down the line, but that's one down. Foster got a good jump on him. That'll bring up Chick Gandell. Gandell, the first baseman in 1919 for the White Sox, batted 290, one home run, 60 ribbies. Right handed batter. Excellent contact hitter against lefties, 8 out of 10. Power non existent, 1 out of 10. Aye, well, he will go fishing. Gullet picks up the sign from bench. He deals to Chick Gandell. Gandell's going to swing at the first pitch, and he sends that ball right center field. Griffey. On the run, Geronimo, Griffey, oh, the ball goes off, Griffey's glove. And reaching first base on the air by Ken Griffey is Chick Gandell. He has good above average speed, 6 out of 10, stealing ability, 8 out of 10, but you got Johnny Bench behind the plate. And here comes Shoeless Joe Jackson. Shoeless Joe Jackson, 351, 7 home runs, 96 ribbies. Excellent contact, average power. Above average eye. Gullet looks to first. Jackson's gonna we're gonna go with the hit and run. Here's the pitch to Shoeless Joe. Hit and run. Ground ball back to Gullet. Only plays to first. Jackson was hoping to hit a gap with that. So Chick Gandell could be off and running. Instead, two outs and Gandell's in scoring position at second base. And here comes Buck Weaver, third baseman for the Black Sox when they fixed the World Series against the Cincinnati Reds in 1919. 296, three homers, 75 ribbies. Excellent contact. Poor power and poor eye. Weaver, Weaver, Weaver will go fishing. He's going to take the first pitch. Gullet deals. And that's in there for a strike at the knees. Off-speed pitch. Weaver spits out his hands. Back in the batter's box. Gandell takes his lead. Bench sets the target. The pitch to Buck Weaver. 1-1 one, one count to Weaver. Weaver swings. Ground ball to Concepcion at short. He throws the first, and the side is retired. One down. Well, uh, top of the first over. We go to the bottom of the first. And we have Eddie Seacott on the mound. The junk baller, knuckleballer, spitballer. 29 and 7 with one save, 1.82 earned run average. He struck out 110 while only walking 49. Behind the plate, Ray Schalk, who had nothing to do with the fix. 8 out of 10 arm, 9 out of 10 defense. Buck Weaver, 7 out of 10 at third. Swede Risberg, average at short. Eddie Collins, excellent at second. And Chick Gandell, no slouch at first, 7 out of 10. The Dog Show is here in Cincinnati to witness this ball game. Shoeless Joe Jackson doesn't have much range, 3 out of 10, but his arm is above average, 6 out of 10 in left. Happy Felch, very good in center, 8 for range, 9 for arm, and Nemo Liebold, 5 out of 10 range, 7 out of 10 arm. And here comes Pete Rose, will be followed by Joe Morgan and Johnny Bench. Pete Rose was seen talking to Chick Candell before the game, he had a good laugh. So Pete Rose in 1975 batted 317, 7 homers and 74 ribbies. Excellent contact hitter. Below average power to poor and a very good eye. Switch hitter. Batting lefty off the right-handed junker, Eddie Seacott. He's a pull hitter. Here's the pitch. 1-1 one, one count to Rose from Seacott. 
and he rips her shot, and that's going to be off the wall and right. Rose going for two. The throw will not be in time as Rose slides in safely. Leah Bold dug it down quickly, but couldn't get him at second. So here comes little Joe Morgan, second baseman. Excellent contact, above average power, power, excellent eye. Morgan, in 1975, batted 327, 17 homers and 94 ribbies. Left-handed pull hitter. Rose, not very fast, but an above average base stealer. He reads the pitcher well. The White Sox will shift right, but guard third. For Morgan. Seacott nods his head. Shulk sets the target. Here's the pitch to little Joe Morgan. Full count. Here comes a junk ball. It's a number in front of the plate. Shulk throws to first. One down. Advancing to third is Rose. So Rose 90 feet away from giving the big red machine a lead here. And here comes Johnny Bench. 283, 28 homers, 110 runners knocked in. Contact 7 out of 10. Power 8 out of 10. I 6 out of 10. Tony Perez on deck. Eddie Seacott needs that spitter to work now. Shulk wiggles the fingers. The pitch to Bench. 1-1 one, one count to Johnny. Bench lines out to Chick Gandell at first. Great reaction by Chick Gandell. And there are two away. So Rose still standing at third. It's Tony Perez's opportunity to knock him in. TP batted 282, 20 homers, and 109 runners driven in. Contact and power, 7 out of 10. I, 5 out of 10. On deck is George Foster. Doesn't get any easier for Eddie Seacott and the White Sox. Ray Schalk wiggles the fingers. Seacott nods his head. The big slow windup and the pitch to Perez. 0-1 count to Tony. Perez grounds it to deep short. Here's the throw, and the inning is over. Risberg made a very nice play there. Rose is stranded at third. Ken Castro is here in Cincinnati as he says, Go White Sox. Scandal or not, Ken Castro is a dead baller for life. Top of the second here. Felch, Leobold, and Schalk to face Don Gullett. Happy Felch, 275, 7 home runs, 86 ribbies in the movie Eight Men Out. Charlie Sheen portrayed Happy Felch. Felch, above average for contact, power, and eye. Gullett's ready to work. He deals to Felch. 2-1 count to Felch. Felch swings and he rips that ball past the lunge of Rose at third into left. So a leadoff single for Happy Felch and the White Sox. Six out of ten speed. Eight out of ten stealing ability. Here comes Nemo Leobold. Leobold. Six out of ten for sacrifice. Seven out of ten for contact. Power non-existent. I seven out of ten. We're going to play some hit and run with Leobold. Let's see if they pitch out. Bench wiggles the fingers. Gullet rocks and fires. There's the hit and run. There goes the runner. That's a fly ball to shallow right. Griffey coming in. He's already made an error. He makes the catch. He fires back to first. But getting back safe is Happy Felch. So one out, one on for Ray Schalk. Risberg on deck. Ray Schalk the catcher. 282, no home runs, 34 ribbies. Again, good contact hitter. All these dead ballers, pretty much non-existent power, but a very good eye. They'll play hit and run again. There goes Felch. Here's the pitch. And that ball's ripped to the right side. Morgan's only plays the first. Two down. So Felch is at second. And here comes Swede Risberg with Eddie Seacott on deck. What will the Reds do here? Risberg, not one of the best hitters on the team. 256, two homers, 38 ribbies. Above average contact and eye, poor power. Felch should score on a base hit. Now, this is a, a strange... Uh, the dead ballers have never played on AstroTurf. 
And uh, there was a lot of derogatory comments placed towards this uh, stadium by the 1919 White Sox. Here's the pitch to Risberg. Full count to the Swede. Ball four. They pitched him very carefully as Eddie Seacott is on deck. And now is at the plate. So can Eddie Seacott help his own cause? Probably not. He's going to take here. Gullett wants to make quick work of his counterpart Seacott. Gullett fires it in. Strike one. Might look like a slider at the knees. 0-1 count. Seacott chokes up on the bat. Felch at second. Risberg at first. Very good speed. Base hit might score two. If Seacott, through the miracle of God, could find a gap. Bench wiggles the fingers. Gullet nods his head. The pitch to Seacott. 2-2 two -two count to Eddie. Swing and a miss. Strike three. White Sox strand two. We go to the bottom of the second. No score here in Cincinnati on the road to redemption tour. Due up for the Reds, Foster, Griffey, and the smooth fielding shortstop, Davey Concepcion. George Foster, 300 batting average, 23 homers, 78 ribbies. Contact excellent, power very good. I, 4 out of 10, he will go fishing. Right-handed normal hitter. Seacott throws the junker up there, 1-2 count, Foster in the hole. And he sends a shallow fly ball out to left. And that should be out number one. As Shoeless Joe Jackson makes the catch. So with one out, Ken Griffey Sr. strides the plate. He batted 305, four home runs, and 46 ribbies. Left-handed batter. Infield, outfield, straightaway and normal for the White Sox. They don't do much shifting. Seacott's ready to work. He deals to Griffey. 2-1 count to Griffey. Griffey bunts. Wow, a little small ball. Chick Gandel has it. He turns and fires to the second baseman for the out. Nice play all around by Chick Gandel and Eddie Collins. Two down. So Ken Griffey try to surprise the dead ballers with a little dead ball from himself. So with two outs, bases empty, the smooth fielding shortstop Davey Concepcion strides to play 274, five home runs, 49 ribbies. 7 out of 10 contact, poor power, and a below average eye against right-handed pitching. Seacott looks in, quickly nods his head. The pitch to Concepcion. Davey swinging at the first junk ball, grounds it back to Eddie Seacott, who throws to Chick Gandell, and the side is retired. Seacott baffles the Reds in the bottom of the second. We go to the top of the third scoreless here at Riverfront Stadium. Due up for the 1919 White Sox, Collins. Gandal and Shoeless Joe Jackson to face Don Gullett. Collins 0 for 1. Gullett shakes off bench. Now he's ready. The windup and the pitch to Collins. 1 2 count. Collins in the hole. Collins sends it out shallow right. Griffey on the run towards the line. Makes the catch. As the fans are holding their breath. Remember, Griffey made an error in the top of the first. So there's one away. As Ken Castro says, unfortunately, much of what is written in Eight Men Out is fiction. Uh, Saber has spent some 50 years studying the scandal. S-A-B-R. Here comes Chick Gandal. Gandal's 0 for 1. Gandel's going to take. Gullet rocks and fires. Strike one. Chick Gandel didn't like that call. Bench framed that beautifully. Gullet nods his head. The pitch to Chick Gandel. 0 2 count. Gandel in the hole. Nubber in front of the plate. Bench has it. He fires to Tony Perez. Two down. The fans in Cincinnati loving it. They want to stick it to these White Sox. They're sick of hearing how they threw the World Series and how the Reds of 1919 could have never beat the mighty Chicago White Sox. So here, the people are wearing uh, T-shirts here. The hell with them. And referring to the 1919 Black Sox. And here's Shoeless Joe Jackson. He's 0 for 1. Spray hitter, left-handed batter. Bench goes through the signs. 
Gullet acknowledges with a quick nod of the head. Here's the pitch to Shoeless Joe Jackson. 3-1 count to Jackson. Jackson, ball four. So Jackson's on with two outs. Jackson, average speed, above average stealing ability. Here comes Buck Weaver. Buck Weaver's 0 for 1. Weaver gets the green light. Gullet takes a quick, quick peek to first. And now he deals. 1-0. Weaver swings. Shallow fly ball to right. Griffey coming in, and he makes the catch as the fans in Cincinnati hold their breath. The side is retired. As Captain Carl says, the 1919 White Sox are not called the Black Sox because of the scandal. It's because Kaminsky was so stingy that he was charging the players for their laundry. Yeah, he was a cheap bastard, Kaminsky. Bottom of the third, still no score here in Cincinnati. That'll bring up Cesar Geronimo, Don Gullett, and the top of the order, Pete Rose. Cesar Geronimo, 257. Six homers, 53 ribbies. Left-handed pull hitter. Hard shift right for the White Sox. Buck Weaver's practically playing short. Whit Risberg is to the right of the second base bag. Here comes the flutter ball to Cesar Geronimo. He's going to swing at the first offering. And he grounds it into the shift as that's out number one. Nice play by Collins on this newfangled AstroTurf, as they called it. Sweet Risberg says if a horse can't eat it, it must be crap. And here's Don Gullet. Seacott works quickly to his counterpart. Gullet in the hole. One, two. The junker. Oh, a rip shot down to third. And Buck Weaver made a quick reaction play, and he fires to Gandell. Two down. Wow. Gullet was sitting on that spitball. And here comes Pete Rose. Rose is one for one. Was stranded at third in the bottom of the first. Switch hitter batting lefty. He's a pull hitter. Again, hard shift to the right for these... 1919 White Sox. Seacott nods his head. Shulk sets the target. The pitch to Charlie Hustle. Full count to Rose. Rose. Shallow center field. Going out is Eddie Collins and he makes the catch. Nice play by the second baseman. The side is retired. As Eddie Seacott continues to baffle the big red machine. Top of the fourth, scoreless. Felch, Libold, and Schalk for the White Sox of 1919. Here's Happy Felch, one for one. Gullet picks up the sign from Bench. He rocks and fires. 1-0 count to Felch. Felch swings and he rips another shot past the lunge of Pete Rose into left. So Felch is two for two. He has both hits for the White Sox. Here comes Leobold. Leobold's 0 for 1. The hit and runs on. There goes Felch. Leobold rips her shot. Right center field. Felch hits second on his way to third. And that's dead ball for you, baby. First and third, no outs. And here comes Ray Schalk, the catcher. He is 0 for 1. Corners move in. So Rose in at third, Perez in at first. Or he's going to hold in charge, it looks like. Will they go with the squeeze play? Or will they let Ray Schalk just swing away? They'll put the runners in motion, hit and run. Here's the pitch to Schalk. Schalk sends that ball out to left center field. Foster on the run, Geronimo on the run. Foster makes the catch, tagging up. Here's the throw to the plate. Not in time! As the White Sox go up 1-0. And I'm sure there's going to be some talk on that bench why he did not slide. But he got in there. Foster's throw was a bit of a, a, a 
lot, you know, a high arcing throw, but he got it off quickly. It was a closer play than most people thought. But the White Sox take the lead 1-0 on the sack fly by Schalk. Here's Swede Risberg. He's, he walked his first time up. Nemo Leobold's at first. Perez holding him on. On deck is Eddie Seacott. There's the hit and run again. There goes the runner at first. Risberg swings, grounds it to Concepcion, who will throw to first. And they'll get Risberg by a couple of steps. Two down. And here's Eddie Seacott. Leobold will have a few extra steps at second with two outs. The pitch to Eddie Seacott. 0 oh, 1. Seacott choking up on that bat. He swings! Ball hit the deep short. Concepcion, strong, low, throw, scooped out of the dirt by Perez. The side is retired, but the White Sox of 1919 draw first blood. We go to the bottom of the fourth. The 1919 White Sox won. The 1975 Reds, nothing. Due up for the big red machine, Morgan, Bench, and Perez to face the spitter, the junker, Eddie Seacott. Joe Morgan is 0 for 1. Left-handed pull hitter. White Sox go hard, shift right. Seacott nods his head. The big slow wind up the pitch to Morgan. One, two count. Morgan in the hole. Morgan grounds it right in the shift. Chick Gandell backhands it, waves off. Seacott takes it to the bag himself. One away. Now bring up Johnny Bench. He's 0 for 1. He's a right handed pull hitter. Chick Gandell gives a signal for everybody to mambo to the left, as Bill Mambo Kett for the Red Sox would say. Chick Gandell, the only defender on the right side on what he calls this green crap. Here's the pitch to Bench. 1-1 one, one count to Johnny Bench. Bench swings. Right center field. That's going to hang up there. Leobald makes the running catch. He had a late start. Late start, but he got there. The ball did hang up. So there's two outs. Base is empty for Tony Perez. He had 20 homers in 75. One swing of the bat for this power hitting right-handed batting pull hitter. And it's a 1-1 game. Will he jack it down the left field line? White Sox again shift left. Outfield straight away in normal. Perez looking to tee it high and let it fly. Schalk goes through the sign. Seacott nods his head. Pitch homeward bound. 1-1 one, one count to Tony Perez. Perez swings. He goes the other way. Nice piece of hitting by Tony Perez. He just waited back on that junk pitch and went the other way. Quickly getting over towards the line was Leopold. And that holds Perez to a two-out single. Now here comes Speak softly. But carry a big boomstick, George Foster. He's 0 for 1. Tremendous power. Perez slow at first. Seacott takes a look. Now the pitch to Foster. Foster swing at the first junk ball offering. Foster. Center field coming in, making the catch is Felch. And the side is retired. Oh, fooled badly on that junk ball by Seacott. We go to the top of the fifth. The White Sox cling to a 1-0 lead. Due up for the Black Sox of 1919. Collins, Gandal, and Shoeless Joe Jackson to face Don Gullett. Gullett's gone four innings, three hits, one earned run, two walks, and a strikeout. The pitch to Eddie Collins from Don Gullett. And that's a base hit to right. And I shall be with you in a moment.
And we are back. Thank you for your patience. Back to the ball game we go. So Eddie Collins is at first after that single to right. Oh, actually, I think that was an error. Was that an error? Could have been. I see an error up there. So I believe that was an error. And that will bring up Chick Gandell. 0 for 2. Collins, a pretty good base stealer. Perez holding him on. Hit and run once again. There goes Collins. They pitch out, swing and a miss. The throw down by Bench. He's out by four years. So Johnny Bench says, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. And heading back to the bench is Eddie Collins. The error will not hurt. Chick Gandell digs back in with no runners on now. Gullet rocks and fires. 0-1 oh, count to Gandell. Gandel grounds it slowly to short. Concepcion, good strong throw to Perez. Two away. Reds fans applaud the effort. So two outs, base is empty. 1-0 Chicago, top of the fourth. Shoeless Joe Jackson's 0 for 1. Gullet deals to the Shoeless one. Full count to Jackson. And he walks. Johnny Bench wanted that call. He didn't get it. So Jackson's at first, and here comes Buck Weaver. Buck Weaver's 0 for 2. Gullet looks towards Perez, now in at the plate. Bench sets the target. The pitch to Weaver. 0-2 count. Weaver in the hole. Oh, the ball gets away from Bench. That pitch crossed him up. Gullet and Bench were not on the same page there. Advancing to second is Shoeless Joe Jackson. And there was a big cheer from the White Sox fans who've Travel to Cincinnati. So with two outs, Jackson in scoring position. One ball, two strikes now on Buck Weaver. Gullet peeks over his shoulder. Now he rocks and deals. Full count to Weaver. Weaver sends that ball deep to right center field. Griffey on the run, and he makes the catch. And the side is retired. Re Weaver gave it a ride, got under it, but it carried a far way. But Griffey wanted to atone for that horrible error in the top of the first, did so. We go to the bottom of the fifth, still 1-0 White Sox. Due up for the big red machine. Griffey, Concepcion, and Cesar Geronimo to face the junker, Eddie Seacott. Griffey's 0 for 1. The spitter to senior. And he grounds it to deep third. Weaver with a good strong throw to Gandel. One down. Now bring up Davey Concepcion. He is 0 for 1. Seacott works quickly. 3-1 count. Concepcion. Ball 4. So Seacott walks his first batter. He's only given up two hits, no runs, four and a third so far. Has struck out none. Concepcion, definitely a base-stealing threat. And here comes Cesar Geronimo, left-handed pull hitter. On deck is Don Gullet. White Sox will go hard shift right. As Buck Weaver will assume the shortstop position. Grisberg to the right of the bag. Here's the pitch to, Day, uh, to Cesar Geronimo. Geronimo swings, sends that ball deep down the right field line. Leopold on the run. He makes the catch. He fires it back in as bluffing at first was Concepcion. There's two outs, and here comes Don Gullet. Gullet is 0 for 1. He hit a hard shot to Buck Weaver at third, though. The pitch from Seacott to Gullet. 1 2. Ground ball. Seacott late getting off the mound. He throws and they get him. And the side is retired. We go to the top of the six. 1-0. 1919 White Sox over the 75 Reds. Seacott spinning a gem. It'll be Felch, Leobold, and Schalk to face Don Gullet. Happy Felch is two for two. He has been a thorn in Dunn. In Don Gullet's side, as they say. 
Gullet looking to retire Felch for the first time. Pitch homeward bound. 2-2 count to Happy. And Felch grounds it to Perez. Perez will throw to Gullet and he steps on the bag. One down. So Happy Felch is retired. None too happy about that. And that will bring up Nemo Leobold. He is 1-4-2. Bench wiggles the fingers. Here's the pitch from Gullet. 2 2 count to Leobold. Leobold, fly ball, left field coming in his foster. Two down. So it's a pitcher's duel here in this Road to Redemption tour. And that will bring up the number seven batter, the catcher Ray Schalk. He had the sack fly that knocked in the only run so far in this game in the top of the first, about uh, fourth. The pitch to Schalk. 0-1. Gullet rocks and fires. Schalk grounds it slowly to third. Rose boots the ball! He fires late. And that's going to be the second error on the Cincinnati Reds. And here comes Swede Risberg with Eddie Seacott on deck. Let's see what Risberg can do here. He's been very vocal about this game. Perez to hold Schalk on. Average base stealer, but excellent speed. Here's the pitch to Risberg. 3-1 count. Risberg, ball four. So they pitch very carefully to the Swede. And here comes Eddie Seacott. You're not pitch hitting for Eddie Seacott. So Seacott knows he's got to come through. Seacott looks down towards third. Third base coach just smiles and gives him the swing away sign. Seacott chokes up. Risberg at, I'm um, sorry, Schalk at second. Risberg at first, both with excellent speed. The pitch to Eddie Seacott, one-two count. Seacott in the hold. Seacott up the middle. Concepcion ranges, fires to Perez, and the side is retired. Great range by Davy Concepcion robs Eddie Seacott of what would have been an RBI single. Instead, we go to the bottom of the six. One nothing White Sox. Do up for the 75 Reds. The big red machine. Will they get going against the spitter, the junker? Eddie Seacott, Rose, Morgan, and Bench. That play just revved up everybody. Here comes Pete Rose. He is one for two. Switch hitter batting left. He's a pull hitter. Hard shift right for the White Sox. The flutter ball flies fourth to Rose. 1 0 count to Pete. Pete grounds it. Pass the dive of Risberg. He beats the shift. And the tying run is on. Rose sneers at Eddie Seacott. Here comes Joe Morgan. Little Joe, the chicken wing man. Remember how he used to do that with his arm? Another left handed pull hitter. He's 0 for 2. Again, they'll go hard shift right. Seacat hoping to induce a double play ball. Again, these White Sox have never played on the, this AstroTurf, or as Chick Gandel called it, green crap. Here's the pitcher, little Joe Morgan. Full count to little Joe. Ball four. Seacat didn't have control of that flutter ball. First and second, no outs for Johnny Bench, who's 0 for 2. The Reds catcher can come through in a big way here, a big way. Tying run at second in Pete Rose. Go ahead run in the speedy Joe Morgan at first. Seacott. As Schalk now steps out from behind the plate, and he's going to set the defense. They're going to shift left in the infield. Outfield straight away in normal. Schalk. Back behind the plate, squats down, sets the target, the pitch to Bench, full count to Johnny Bench. Ball four, so Eddie Seacott has given up a single and two walks. The bases are juiced, no outs, and here's Tony Perez. Perez, a right-handed pull hitter. The White Sox up one, bases loaded, they don't want a big inning here. They will play for two. They're going to shift, le uh, shift left again. They're not going to play the infield in, though. They will give up the run to try to get two outs. Perez with 20 homers and 109 ribbies in 75. Seacott takes a deep breath, arms down to his chest. The pitch to Perez. Full count to Perez. Swing and a miss. He strikes him out. 
Oh my lord, what a time to have your first strikeout. And Eddie Seacott just went with an inside fastball. He's been throwing exclusively junk. And he just basically totally overpowered Perez, who has need, who had pretty much seen nothing more than 70 miles per hour from Seacott. But now, with one out, it's George Foster. They're still not out of the frying pan yet. Rose at third, Morgan at second, Johnny Bench at first, and George Foster with the boomstick at the plate. The White Sox and Eddie Seacott rubbing the baseball. He looks behind him. He signals. He wants him to play double play depth. Risberg and Collins will pinch the middle. Seacott puts the ball back in his glove back up on the bump he toes the rubber the pitch to Foster 0-1 Foster swings and that's a base hit up the middle past the dive of Eddie Collins one run scores here's the throw Morgan is safe 2-1 to one, Reds George Foster clapping his hands at first base comes through in the clutch A two-run single by Foster with one out. Let's watch that replay. Here's the pitch. And Foster, you can see Collins make a dive, but again, that ball takes off quite quickly on that AstroTurf. It was a one-hopper. Close play at the plate. Schultz tried to block it, but Morgan got in. So first and second, two to one, Cincinnati. Seacott now has to face Ken Griffey Sr., who is 0 for 2. Again, they move to double play depth. They now trail by 1. Seacott's got to keep it a one-run deficit. The pitch to Ken Griffey Sr., 0-2 count in the hole. Hard hit ball to Gandal. Gandal! Oh! Did they get him? No! As Risberg couldn't make the turn. So there's two outs and runners on the corner. Bench at third, Griffey at first, and Davey Concepcion at the plate. Cesar Geronimo on deck. Concepcion's 0 for 1. They're playing the charge here in Cincinnati. Fans clapping along. Seacott takes a deep breath, nods his head. Schalk sets the target. They're going to try to get Davey to chase by trying to pitch to the uh, borders. The pitch from Eddie Seacott, 2-1, and it's a fly ball. Right center, Leopold makes the catch, so they get Concepcion to reach. He flies out for the third and final out, but the Reds get two in the bottom of the sixth. They take the lead 2-1 as we go to the top of the seventh. Top of the order for the White Sox. In this Road to Redemption tour, this mythical matchup of much greatness. Collins, Gandal, and Shoeless Joe Jackson to face Don Gullett, who now has the lead. Six innings, four hits, one earned run, four walks, and a K. Eddie Collins is one for three. Here's the pitch from Gullett to Eddie Collins. He's in the hole, one, two. And he grounds hard to Morgan. Morgan throws to first, one away. Chick Gandal steps to the plate. Gandal's 0 for 3. Gullet rocks and fires. Gandal, 1-0, swings the lumber. Ground ball up the middle. Concepcion ranges towards the second base bag. And they get Gandal by five years. Two down. That will bring up Shoeless Joe Jackson. He's 0 for 1. On deck is Buck Weaver. Jackson going for the drag bunt. Here's the pitch. Jackson, drag bunt. He missed it. Oh, boy. Try to surprise them. The count's 0 and 1 now. And now Rose creeps in at third. Perez still plays back. Though. Jackson awaits the gullet offering. The pitch. 1-1 one, one count to Shoeless Joe. Jackson swings. Fly ball, shallow center. Geronimo's there. And the side is retired. We go to the bottom of the seventh. Two to one, Cincinnati. Due up for the Reds. Geronimo, Gullet, 
and Pete Rose. Cesar Geronimo is 0 for 2. Left-handed pull hitter. Hard shift right by the White Sox in the infield. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and Cracker Jacks. I don't care if I ever get back for it's root, root, root for your home team. If they lose, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball game. And the fans cheer along. White Sox again will go hard shift right. The pitch to Geronimo, 1-0. Geronimo swings the stick. Grounds it right into the shift. Oh, passed! Both Chick Gandell and Eddie Collins. That ball, as they say, had eyes as Leopold throws it back in. Holy cow. Now Dan Dreesen's going to pitch hit for Gullet. So Sparky Anderson goes with Dan Dreesen. 281, 7 homers, 38 ribbies. Left-handed normal hitter. Geronimo has above average speed and excellent stealing ability. White Sox will play for two. Seacott throws to first! And Geronimo just got under the Chick Gandle tag. Oh boy, they almost picked him off. Seacott again. And pitch from the hold, the runner. He deals to Dreesen. One, two count, Dreesen in the hole. The ball gets away from Schalt. And advancing to second is Cesar Geronimo. That is a huge insurance run. Schalk has a quick word with Eddie Seacott. Now back behind the mound. Infield goes back to normal. 2-2 Two -two count to Dreesen. Seacott peeks over his shoulder. Looks in at Schalk. He kicks and deals. Dreesen. Grounds it. Right side. And again, Collins can't get to it. But they hold Geronimo, which is surprising. But I guess with... No outs. You don't want to run into an out at home. First and third, no outs. And here comes Pete Rose. They will now play the infield in. Infield in and to the right as he's a Pete. Pete Rose is a pull hitter. Switch hitter batting lefty. Infield in. Shift right. Seacott has to come up big. Here's the pitch to Charlie Hustle. 2-1 count. Rose swings. And that's a base hit in the right. One run scores going first to third is Dreesen Rose with a Hustle double. And he is saved. And he emphatically claps his hands at second base. As it's now 3-1 Cincinnati Reds. The big red machine starting to pour it on. And here comes Joe Moore. Eddie Collins has had his tough day at second base. It's that AstroTurf. He's not used to it. And again, they're going to go shift right. Infield in. As Morgan, left-handed batting pull hitter. On deck is bench. Seacott deals to Morgan. 3-1 count. Morgan rips a line shot past the dive of Chick Gandell in the right. Here comes Rose. Morgan digging for two and he'll have a double. As the Reds have broken this game wide open. As Eddie Seacott has now given up five runs. The flutter ball is flying fourth except to the outfield. Morgan stands at second. Bench at the plate. The pitch to Johnny Bench, 5-1 Reds, 1-0 to Bench. Bench to Risberg, long throw, and Gandal digs it out of the dirt. There's one away. Advancing to third is Morgan. So with one out, Perez at first, Foster on deck. Infield moves in for Tony Perez, right-handed pull hitter. So they're going to go infield in, shift left. The 
pitch to TP. Perez will swing at the first offering. And he rolls the other way past the dive of Chick Gandell. And it is 6-1. to one. What a piece of hitting by Tony Perez. The big red machine firing on all cylinders now. Here comes George Foster. Foster won for three with two ribbies. He gave the Reds the lead in the bottom of the six, looking to add to what now is a five-run lead. The pitch to the big boomstick. 0-1 to Foster. Foster fly ball. Right field moving to the right towards the right line is Leopold. He makes the catch. Two away, retreating back to first is Perez. Ken Griffey Sr. steps to play. He's 0 for 3. Seacott looks to first. Now in towards the plate. The pitch to Griffey. 1-2 count. Griffey in the hole. And he sends one out to right. Coming in is Leopold towards the line. Makes the catch. The side is retired. But the damage is done. Cincinnati scores four more. They go to the top, the eighth, six to one Reds, a commanding lead. We'll have a new pitcher as Dreesen batted for Don Gullett. Can the White Sox come through? That's a lot of runs for them to overcome. It's going to be Gary Nolan. Nolan in 1975 was 15 and nine. Majority of his innings came as a starter, but uh, Sparky Anderson in this special one and done uh, road to redemption game will pitch Nolan out of the pen. He will face Weaver, Felch, and Leopold. And Seacott will most likely, if you get to him, you're going to have to pinch hit for him, I would think. As the dog shows his, Pete definitely has action on this game. I would think so. Gandal, Captain Carl says, Gandal must have money on the Reds. Here's the pitch. Oh, uh, Gary Nolan. Quality of pitches is poor. Movement is good. Actually, a, a very good 7 out of 10. And control is excellent. 10 out of 10. Here's the pitch. 2-1 count to Weaver. Weaver grounds it to Perez, who flips to Nolan. One down. Here's Happy Felch. Felch is 2 for 3. He's sad to see Gullet leave. Nolan rocks and fires to Felch. 2-2 count to Happy. Swing and a miss! Strike three. Slider got him. Set him up with the fastball. So there's two outs, no one on. And here comes Nemo Liebold. He is one for three. The pitch to Liebold. Liebold swings at the first Nolan offering. And fly ball. Left center. On the run is Foster, but Geronimo calls him off. And the side is retired. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Eddie Seacott back up on the mound. He has taken a pounding in the past two innings. He's given up two in the sixth, four in the seventh. Thus, the Reds take the lead six to one. He'll face Concepcion, Geronimo, and Nolan. The pitch to Davey Concepcion. 0-1 to the smooth fielding shortstop. Ground ball to his counterpart, Risberg. He throws to Gandel, one away. Had a little trouble getting that ball out of his glove. Here's Cesar Geronimo. The center fielder is one for three. Left-handed pull hitter, shift right. Though the Reds have beaten the shift on quite a numerous occasions in this game. The pitch to Geronimo. He swings the lumber. And he goes the other way. They beat the shift again. Oh, he took a wide turn, but he didn't challenge Shoeless Joe Jackson, who has above average arm. And a pinch hitter, Daryl Chaney. So Nolan pitches the eighth, so they're probably going to go to Raleigh Eastwick in the ninth. Here's the pitch to Chaney. 2-1 count to Chaney. Chaney swings. Base hit past the lunge of Chick Gandel. Going first to third, the throw! Hey. Not in time. Geronimo slides in safely as Weaver applies the tag. So it's first and third, one away. And here comes Pete Rose, three for four and a ribby. Infield in. They're not even going to shift because Rose, the Reds have beaten the shift quite often in this game. So we're just going to go infield in straight away. The pitch to Rose from Seacott. 1-1 one, one count to Charlie Hustle. And that's a shot up the middle. Base hit. 
Here's the throw to third, and out by five years is Cheney. Reds fans didn't like that lackadaisical effort by the pinch hitter. So there's two outs now, but Rose is knocked in another, and it's seven to one. And here's Joe Morgan. Little Joe one for three with two ribbies. Seacott rocks and fires. One, two count. Little Joe in the hole. Base. Oh, Rinsberg boots the ball at short. And now you can see some Chicago White Sox sports writers looking like they're circling plays as they're keeping the book. That is another error on the White Sox. Two outs, two on, 7 1. Reds, bottom of the eighth. Johnny Bench is 0 for 3. Will he get off the Schneid? The junk ball from Seacott, 3 1 count. Ball four, Eddie Seacott really struggling now. And Chicago reluctantly will get someone up in the pen. As the Reds look to crush the road to redemption tour here in the first game. And they're going to go with Dickie Kerr. Dickie Kerr, the lefty, normally a starter, but we're going with Dickie Kerr. Not that it matters, but... Bill H. James, the righty. Eddie Seacott so far, seven and two thirds, 12 hits, seven earned runs, four walks, and a K. Tony Perez, two for four with a ribby. Two outs, bases juiced. They'll play straight away. Perez beat the shift last time up. Huh? Here's the pitch to TP from Eddie Seacott, 1-0. Perez is gonna swing with the base load. Ground ball to third. Weaver has it, he fires to Gandell, who holds on the ball this damn time. We go to the top of the ninth. Reds tack on one more. They lead seven to one. So they broke through against Eddie Seacott in the sixth. They got two in the sixth, four in the seventh, and one in the bottom of the eighth. Top of the ninth, seven one Cincinnati. On the mound is Tom Carroll. They do not go to Raleigh Eastwick with the big lead. Carroll. Four and one, no saves, 4.98. So Sparky thinks he has the game in the bag. Kerr and James continue to warm just in case a miracle happens. Bottom third of the order, Schalk, Risberg, and a pinch hitter for Seacott. Tom M. Carroll, below average quality of pitches. Movement, very good, 8 out of 10. Control average, 5 out of 10. And he walks more than he strikes out. This is a really odd choice for Sparky Anderson. Down by six. Schalk will take. Here's the pitch from Carroll. As they play the organ. And that's strike one. A get me over breaking ball. So an 0 1 count. Carroll nods his head. He deals once again to Ray Schalk. 0 2 to Schalk. Ground ball. Oh, Pete Rose makes a diving stop, but a bad throw. A bad throw, and Schalk reaches on the air. A great stop by Rose. He got up and fired to first, and Perez couldn't corral the throw. And the White Sox need runners, and they'll take them any way they can get them. Kerr and James are ready. They have stopped warming up, and will actually sit down for the moment as we don't want to tire them out. You never know, folks. The game's not over yet. And here comes Swede Risberg. Risberg will take. Carroll deals to the Swede. Ball, wow, way outside. Risberg to take again. Again, an odd choice. And you have to understand, I set them to bring in their closer. Eighth inning and on. 
but I did put close game, so. All right. Here's the pitch to Risberg again. And that just catches the outside corner. Risberg can't believe it. 2-1 count. Risberg with the advantage here at the plate. Perez holding Schalk on. Bench sets the target. Carroll, the windup and the pitch. Risberg swings. Base hit to left. Foster gets over it. He makes a diving stop not to let it go down in the corner. And holding up at second is Ray Schalk. And Eddie Seacott will not hit. And here come the dead ballers, the White Sox of 1919. Yeah, let's see here. 227, 333, only 12 at-bats. Holy! Imagine how boring it had to be for Harvey McLennan to play on that team. He only had 12 at-bats in 1919. Fred McMullen. 294, 170 at bats. Shane O'Collins. We should have, we should have played Shane O'Collins in right. 279. And Eddie Murphy looks a bit different. 486, 35 at bats. You know what? I'm gonna go with the 486. Five contact. Shane O'Collins five contact. Fred McMullen five contact, Harvey McLennan three and two. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Eddie Murphy. He'll pinch hit for Eddie Seacott. Let's see if the, how long the Reds will stick with uh, Tom Carroll. First and second, no outs. Here's Eddie Murphy. The Murph. 486. No homers, five ribbies, five out of ten contact, non-existent power, and an eye, six out of ten. He's going to take. They need runners. Here's the pitch from Carroll. He can't find the strike zone. Wow. He'll take again. Ball. To, uh, Johnny Bench is incensed behind the plate. He screams at his pitcher. Murphy looks to third. Now steps back in the box. Bench pounding the mitt, imploring Tom M. Carroll to hit the target. He rocks and deals. M Murphy taking all the way. And there's a strike and a mock cheer comes up by the Reds fans. They're still feeling their oats. They're up 7-1. to one. It's a 2-1 count. Murphy again looks down to third. Now digs back in the left-hander's batter's box. Schalk at second. Excellent speed. Risberg... At first, excellent speed. The pitch to Murphy. 2-1. Murphy swings. Goes the other way. Foster on the run. It's not going to be there. He doesn't make the catch. And the bases are juiced. As Shock played it safe, Foster made a bid. He thought about diving, but then decided to play it on the hop. Probably the smart thing to do. And... Carroll is still in there, and here comes Eddie Collins. Collins is one for four. Base is juiced. Carroll can't find the freaking plate. What's Sparky Anderson waiting for? Collins taking. Here's the pitch by Carroll, and there's a strike. A get-me-over curveball. If he throws that again, Eddie Collins is going to find a gap. Remember, Schalk is at third. Risberg at second. Murphy, the pinch hitter, at first. Eddie Collins ready to grip and rip. Sweating like a profuse pig on the mound is Tom M. Carroll. He deals. 1-2 count. Collins sends that ball. Shallow right. Coming in. Coming in. Griffey makes the catch. Bluffing but not tagging is Schall. And the fans cheer on that. They're holding their breath now. And here comes Chick Gandel. First baseman is 0 for 4. In 1919, Gandel drove in 60 with a 290 batting average. Only had one homer, though. Has a poor eye. He's going to take. Carroll deals to Gandel. And a strike. So Johnny Bench went out and basically screamed at the pitcher. And out of fear, Carroll is throwing strikes. 0-1, Chick Gandel. Can he be a hero here? 
base is juiced, can chick, get some Chick-fil-A. Bench sets the target. Carroll rocks and fires. 1-1 one, one count to Chick Gandalf. And Gandalf grounds it back to Carroll. He throws the bench. Who throws the parade? Safe! But there are two outs now. And Bench points to Carroll. Says, that's what I'm talking about, you son of a bitch. And now, here's Shoeless Joe Jackson. 7-1. The last hopes fall on the Shoeless one. Jackson is 0 for 2. Jackson has an excellent eye. He has the green light. Carroll deals to Shoeless Joe Jackson. Jackson swings the lumber on the first pitch. And he drives that ball to center field and making the running catch is Cesar Geronimo. The Reds storm the field. And the Reds fans start chanting none, something none too pleasurable to the White Sox. So, in our Road to Redemption tour in the first game, the 1975 Cincinnati Reds come up huge in the 6th, 7th, and 8th. They score 2 in the 6th, 4 in the 7th, and a single digit in the bottom of the 8th. They take the lead and move on to victory 7-1. to one. Seacott came apart in the bottom of the six. Lost his control for a bit. And the Reds were no longer being fooled by the flutter ball. Let's go to the box score and call it a stream. Some anxious moments with Tom M. Carroll out of the pen for the Reds. But Sparky felt they had a big enough lead and I guess he was right. Player of the game. Let's see who player of the game is. Pete Rose. Rose is said to had a big interest in this game. Rose was four for five, two runs scored and two ribbies. Charlie Hustle feels this game should propel him to the Hall of Fame. Let's go to the pitching. Eddie Seacott went eight innings. And again, he fell apart pretty much in the sixth and the seventh. The seventh was a horrendous inning as he gave up four in the seventh. All right, so Eddie Seacott and the flutter ball. Eight innings, 12 hits, seven runs, all the murder. He walked four, struck out one, threw 137 pitches. Don Gullick got the win. He went seven strong innings, innings, four hits, one run. It was earned, walked four, struck out one. Nolan pitched one. And then... Sparky Anderson curiously went to Tom M. Carroll. He pitched one. He made it an adventure. He loaded the bases up. Gave up two hits, but got out of it. As Johnny Bench was ready to bludgeon him to death with his catcher's mitt. Let's go to the box score. Eddie Collins was 1 for 5. Chick Gandal was 0 for 5. Shoeless Joe Jackson was 0 for 3. He walked twice, though. Buck Weaver was 0 for 4. Happy Felch was 2 for 4 with a run scored, and he struck out once. Leobold, Nemo, 1 for 4. Schalk, 0 for 3 with a ribby on a sack fly, the only run the White Sox could muster. Risberg was 1 for 2. He walked twice. Eddie Seacott, 0 for 3. He struck out. Felch also struck out. Those are your two Ks there. And the pinch hitter, Eddie Murphy, no, not that Eddie Murphy. Had a single to left. So the White Sox, 34 at-bats, one run, six hits, one ribby, four walks, and two Ks. Pete Rose, player of the game, four for five, two runs scored, two ribbies. Joe Morgan, one for four, two runs scored, two ribbies, and a walk. Bench, 0 oh, for three with two walks. Perez, two for five with a ribby and a K. He's the only Cincinnati Red to K. He's going to take quite a ribbing for that. Foster, one for four with two ribbies. Griffey and Concepcion were offers. Griffey, 0 for four. Concepcion, 0 for three with a walk. Cesar Gerardo had a good day, two for four and two runs scored. Gullet, the pitcher, was 0 for two. Dreesen, the pinch hitter, one for one with a run scored. Nolan pitch did not hit. Chaney, the pinch hitter, uh, was one for one, but then had a horrendous. He was thrown out by third by 10 years. What the hell was he thinking? And Tom M. Carroll pitched, did not hit. The Reds in victory, 36 at-bats, 7 runs, 12 hits, 7 ribbies, 4 walks, and 1 K. Chicago had their chances. They left 11 runners on base. The Reds left 9. 
The Cincinnati Reds of 1975 pulled out all the stops tonight, winning this one game, uh, special attraction, Road to Redemption, uh, with the Chicago Black Sox of 1919. It was a seesaw affair, but with a 7-1 victory at Riverfront Stadium, the Reds, you know, they just... From, it was a different game, a tale of two games, 6th, 7th, and 8th. That's where the Reds scored their seven runs. A victory parade is scheduled in Cincinnati in a few days. This is Al Red Sox fan saying, hope you enjoyed it, as that was a road to redemption game between the 1919 White Sox and the 1975 Reds, using this absolutely marvelous game, Out of the Park Baseball 20. I'd like to thank everyone. The Dog Show Check out that wonderful channel, Clinton Parks. Check out that channel, Captain Carl 8, Ken Castro, sports writer extraordinaire, Dave Gardner, as he says, let's go Reds, HockeyTournaments.com, Dice to Digital, Digital to Dice, and also his YouTube channel and Facebook pages. Bobby Cantalano, please check out her YouTube channel. She's still stalking the Gators and her Facebook page. ID Gesture, another wonderful channel. Remember, this Sunday, I believe he has a Dungeons and Dragon uh, starting up again with Uncle Ron Juckett, Sarah, his lovely wife, our good friend Chris from Strat, Delaware, and I can't remember who else. But I think that's Sunday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on ID Gesture's channel. Jack Dawson was at the ballpark, along with Randy Luxenberg. And that is everyone. So thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed it. And the dog show will have the last word before I do my send-off. He says, night, folks. God bless. You know it's coming. You know it's coming. Peace.